If you want to learn a little bit about the world of One Piece, then this video can be the best choice for you because in the video, we are going to talk about places in One Piece that are inspired by the real world. For example, most of the East Blue is inspired by Asian places. Nami's home is inspired by Indonesia. Zoro's village is inspired by Nara in Japan, and the Barachi is inspired by Vietnam's floating restaurant. This makes sense because it is literally called the East Blue, Asia being in the East. And when I looked deeper into this, it actually seems to be the direction Oda Sensei went with the entire One Piece world. The West Blue, for instance, features locations like Ohara, that is based on England, Bollywood Kingdom, that is based on Hollywood, of course, and Thriller Bark, that is inspired by French Gothic architecture like the Notre Dame. Anyways, the Goa Kingdom in the East Blue also falls into this pattern, because it is based on the Philippines with its jungles and warm climate. The rich capital and the gray terminal seem to be a representation of Smoky Mountain, a giant landfill in Manila, the capital of the Philippines, where people lived and worked in heaps of garbage. Just like in One Piece, the landfill experienced devastating fires. In the story, it's the nobles that purposefully want to get rid of all the poor people living there to not anger the celestial dragons coming to visit. <laughs> capital city itself, however, seems to be based on the Indian state of Goa, India's richest region, once again contrasting the striking gap between rich and poor. And you must have seen in the reels that there's an elephant-shaped rock on the basis of which our Zunisha is inspired, and similarly Wano and many other countries too are inspired by our real world. If you want to know about these things, then definitely watch the video till the end. The video is going to be very interesting, so without wasting time, let's begin. Guys, I can see that some of you still haven't subscribed. Please, brother, do it if you are watching me. Let's start with our most recent place or recent island, which is the island of Samurai, also known as Wano. Wano, if you don't know, well, you must have guessed that this is very much inspired by Imperial Japan, a country which isolated from the rest of the world. Neither can anyone come in, nor can anyone go out here. You might be thinking that this story resembles North Korea, but in fact, it also reflects Japan's history. In ancient times, Japan was closed off for 265 years, remaining completely isolated. This this theme is mirrored in Wano, and the setting is heavily inspired by Imperial Japan. Let's talk about what Wano was famous for. Those were his swords, and the fact that Wano's swords look exactly like Japan's katanas. If you look at Japan's clothing style, for that I would like to take the example of Kinemon. When he was first seen, he was wearing a traditional Japanese kimono. Nowadays, the trend of wearing this attire has diminished in Japan, but in ancient Japan, the kimono was a very popular garment. Now, it is only worn on special occasions or festivals. You will find the most similarities in a form of government, such as when Kaido was the ruler of Wano but appointed Arachi as a shogun. This same thing used to happen in Japan before, where the ruler would appoint different shoguns. If I talk about your legendary swordsman Mamanosuke, then you will shock after hearing about it, because in Japanese mythology, there's also a child named Momotaro. Now we saw in the anime that Momonosuke, along with Luffy, nine scabbards, and Marco attacked Onigashima and defeated Kaido, who belongs to the Oni race. Similarly, in Japanese mythology, Momo Otaro was also a young boy who led an attack on a group of Oni living on Yagashima Island. Yes, this is a real story. I mean, it's a real mythology story. And just like our Momo in mythology, Momotaro also attacked there with a monkey, a dog, and a bird. And you must have understood the resemblance here. By monkey, I mean Luffy. By dog, Anuarashi. And by bird, Marco. Yes, to a large extent, this whole story is quite similar. It's clear that Oda Sensei has taken this entire story from here. Second up, your favorite place where everyone wants to go, and Sanjay also wants to go, is Amazon Lily. Amazon Lily is a place where only ladies reside, situated in the calm belt. The empress of this place is the most beautiful lady in the world, Boa Hancock, whom I really love, and maybe you do too. Yes, it's the same place where some girls were playing with Luffy's treasure, mistaking it for family jewels. When I think of Amazon Lily, only the Amazonians from DC Comics come to mind, but it's not entirely inspired by them. It's just the part about women residing there that's related to DC. Exactly. The name Amazon Lily is inspired by a flower, as Oda mentioned in his SBS number 55. In the SBS, it was also revealed that the architecture of Amazon Lily is entirely inspired by China, which we can see as the buildings resemble ancient Chinese architecture to a great extent. Anyway, without wasting time on women, let's move on to the next island, which is Water 7. Water 7 is an island situated in paradise, and it is one of the most beautiful islands in the world of One Piece. I literally want to see it in live action, man, and I know where it will be shot. Oda revealed in his SBS number 38 that the entire concept of Water 7 was inspired by Venice. So it's a very beautiful 
beautiful city that Oda has included. However, it's a different story that Wii Animation animated it a long time ago, and it didn't look so beautiful, but I would love to see how they recreate it in live action. However, if we talk about another interesting thing in Water 7, it's their water train named the Puffing Tom, which was created by Tom. He's the same person who also built Roger's ship, so the Puffing Tom is inspired by the train named Puffing Billy, which exists in the UK. Currently, it's just an amusement park train, but if we talk about the fact that this train can run on the sea, then its inspiration has been taken from India because there's a train in the Chennai state of India that literally runs on the ocean. This train is the Rameshwaram Express, which runs over the Pamban Bridge. If you look outside this train, your ass will burst because there is only ocean in the distance. And once you fall, I don't think anyone will stop the train to save you. Now, let's talk about Aqua Laguna, which makes the residents of Water 7 terrified because it causes floods there every time. This flood is also inspired by Venice's infamous Aqua Alta, and year after year, it leads to severe flooding in Venice as well. It causes significant damage to them too. Next, let's talk about Dress Rosa. Dress Rosa is currently a country situated in the New World, where its former warlord Du Flamingo used to rule. When you first see Dress Rosa, you'll notice many colorful houses with checkered roofs, and there are plenty of gardens to explore as well. Its entire inspiration is drawn from Spain. As you can see, a lot of Spanish culture in the Dress Rosa art, such as Viola's dance form, which is the famous flamenco dance of Spain. And just like Dress Rosa, Spain also has similar types of houses. Well, if we talk about the main attraction point of Dress Rosa, it was his Colosseum where all those fights and arena used to take place and where Luffy also fought. And I don't think I need to tell you. I hope you have not skipped your GK classes in ancient Rome used to exist in a similar colossus there, and it still exists. But now now, this is just a history monument. Talking about Tan Tata tribe in the anime, we saw that the Tan Tata tribe is a race of dwarves who are very cute and live in areas with lots of greenery. There's also a place in New Zealand which was set there for the hobbits, so I think this is inspired by that. Next in which is our last location, there are many others, but I keep the interesting ones, which is Florian Triangle. Florian Triangle is a location in the world of One Piece, situated between the routes of Water 7 and Fishman Island. It's where we first encounter Brooke and hear the song Bink's Sake. The atmosphere is characterized by a thick layer of fog, making travel difficult and resulting in many ships disappearing here. Now you must be wondering where the inspiration for this has been taken from. Then it's our infamous Bermuda Triangle. On our Earth, there exists a place where many ships disappear, and many theories have been made by people that aliens live there. But that's not the case. Here, only erratic weather patterns and environmental factors, such as sudden storms and navigational challenges, contribute to accident. Bermuda Triangle is found in the Atlantic Ocean, and it is between Bermuda, Florida, and I think Puerto Rico. A triangular area is formed by connecting to it. Well, in the real world, ships disappear in the Bermuda Triangle due to climatic reasons. But in One Piece, Oda Sensei showed very well why they disappear, and why people don't come back. So the Gecko Moria used to steal people's shadows, and because of this, they could never be in the sunlight. They had no option but to hide themselves in a place where they would never be exposed to the sun. So this was a very interesting thing, the way Oda Sensei portrayed it in the manga. And with this, our list ends with five of the best places which have been inspired by the real world in the world of One Piece. Tell me, which is your favorite place? And will you want a part two of this video? If you guys enjoyed the video, then please like the video immediately. Please feel free to drop comments. I will meet you guys in the next video. Subscribe immediately until the next one. Goodbye.